folks. Today for my second interview, I've got Lance Herdebees from Vintage Group, uh, amongst others. Um, Lance and I have known each other for 20 plus years. When I actually yeah. first moved to Calgary uh, from Vancouver and was looking for employment, uh, I had the pleasure of spending a whole day with Lance while he uh, courted me. And I apologize, I still said no. And then a few years ago, again, we looked at doing something and it just didn't work out. So um, Lance is an awesome guy. He's been around the city for a very long time, a restaurateur with great experience and is awesome in the community, uh, which is why I included all of his restaurants in our list uh, on our previous video today and why I wanted to talk to Lance today. So Lance, you've been doing this a long time. How long have you been in the restaurant industry? <laughs> 34 years. I started Moxie's in 1986, so it's been a while. It's been a long time, and that was uh, quite the roller coaster. Yeah, that was an interesting time. Yeah. Um, so what got you started? Where did your love and your passion come for the restaurant industry? Honestly, I have ADD. It's the perfect industry for me. You know, 700 things going on at the same time, remaining calm. And yeah, you know, I just enjoy being around people. And, you know, we're in the good time business. So people come for a good time. We, we don't get tire kickers. A guy walks in the door, he's buying. Yep. Uh, and that's exactly why I used to love it as well. Um, so Vintage Group and, and the restaurants that you're involved in, tell us a little about that. Give us a list of, of, of the restaurants we should be supporting for you. Sure, we have nine restaurants, but right now we're going to introduce uh, takeout or and curbside at Chairman Steakhouse, just in the Mahogany area in the Westman Village to start this Friday and Saturday. And then Wallflowers is going to introduce like a vintage kitchen, so you can get Booker's Wings there, Booker's Fried Pickles, Vintage Burger, uh, Vintage Mac and Cheese, and then a bunch of items from Wallflower, and if that takes off, we'll move it up to Alora. You know, they're on the outskirts, so versus battling the downtown crowd. Yeah. So you're gonna kinda of try and you're gonna use one central kitchen and try and do all your all the all the customers' favorites from most of the restaurants and be able to put them out of one kitchen. Yeah, no, exactly. So called a ghost kitchen or whatever you want to call it, but you, you know, you, you you concentrate everybody into one restaurant and you sort of give work to a few restaurants in the same yeah. breath. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So those are the ones that you're going to be having operating, but what's the, what's the full list of restaurants that you guys operate? Uh, we manage Chairman Steakhouse. We, we run Vintage and own Vintage uh, Township, Butcher Baker, uh, Wallflower, Booker's. We're a partner in Foreign Concept. Awesome. I think, I think that's it. <laughs> Is that eight restaurants? Anyways. I got seven, but that's okay. Nobody was counting. Um, so, you know, Vintage has been around a very, very long time. Um, great, great steakhouse. Uh, and I've heard nothing but good things about Chairman's as well. So the, the Chairman's thing, what's, as far as the concept is concerned, you guys have been open for what, about four or five months now? No, we'll, we'll be a year in June. June oh, 8th, okay. we, we open for business and uh, it's been phenomenal. We were little concerned high-end steakhouse in the middle of suburbia but it's gone fantastic it's dinner only um yeah. we, we did a balcony party on thursday where we had a singer uh, on our uh, patio oh cool yeah i saw that on your on your instagram yeah yeah so they we, he sang to all the bulk everybody came out on their balconies and we had a little party yeah that's awesome that's yeah. awesome that was, that was a great initiative, and I love the way that it supported the community and got everybody involved in that uh, that complex. It was pretty cool to watch. Uh, yeah, it was no, almost really like really watching uh, Italy when this all first started happening and watching all the Italians sing to each other. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's where we got the idea, to be honest. Awesome. So out of the restaurants that are going to be offering the, uh, the, the curbside and takeout, is that offered through the regular delivery services too, or is that just they're going to call to the restaurants so they can get the food or go to your website? How does that work? Right. Right now, Chairman's – we just decided to do it uh, Monday, so there's no way we'll get on a third-party delivery. So we have hired our own people to deliver right now, okay. and there'll be curbside pickup too. Okay, awesome. And then Wallflower will be on DoorDash. Okay, so Wallflower on DoorDash. I'll make sure I do some links there. Yeah, uh, and we'll, di we'll discount curbside probably 15%, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then and that's obviously because you're, you're, you're paying so much extra to have these DoorDash and delivery services do it. 
Uh, is that a challenge for restaurants these days? You know, trying to stay afloat and then using these services, but then also having to pay the premium to use those services? Yeah, you, you know, when, when we were open, it wasn't a big deal. You have your fixed costs there anyways. You have your late, your people there anyways. So, you know, the 30%, you're paying 20% of that. So it's probably more like a 10% discount. But when you're doing takeout, it's a direct hit, you know, yeah. it's all, all, if you don't do curbside, it, you get a 20 to 30% hit yeah. from those companies. So that, that's the narrative is, uh, get out and enjoy the short little drive to chairman's and, uh, you know, get out and get some fresh air, pick it up curbside. It, helps put more money into the restaurant's pocket and uh, allows you to get a little bit of vitamin D, hopefully, if the flipping snow stops anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, so chairmans will be, you just pull in, text us that you're there, pop your trunk, we run it out, we drop it in, and you're gone. Okay, awesome. And for those that are watching this video, we'll, we'll put links to every single restaurant chain that we're talking to today uh, in the in the bio or whatever you want to call it, the content of the body of the email, uh, or sorry, the value of the video, so that you guys can find it uh, easily. Lance, what what other any other challenges you guys are? I mean, I know that I know Chad's involved in in one of the city groups right now, as far as uh, you know. Um, lobbying them on what we can do for help or what they can do for help for restaurants. You know, what is it that we can do? I know I, I've seen some, some newspaper articles with you in it as well. What are the challenges and, and where can people help? Well, yeah, to me, to me, Rob, it's like a tsunami. It's not a tidal wave. It's going to come in four waves. So the first wave is your cash flows cut off. You owe bills from 30 days. All those come in. You get yeah. through that you have rent. If you defer rent, you're going to get nailed with that bill later. So it's more like a loan. Yeah. Third wave, third wave is now it's over. We got to reopen. It's probably a $40,000 hit because we've given all our food to staff and food banks and stuff like that. So yeah. we need to restock the restaurants. So you get through that and then the deferred rent comes up. I've heard, you know, we're not going to be, we're going to continue social distancing, I heard, unfortunately, today to 2022, which will decimate the business. Uh, you're certainly right. That's going to decimate the business. So this is where people really need to support you guys on the takeout initiatives that you guys are getting involved in. Um, because, you know, the, I, the way I look at this, and this is why I, I literally get emotional about it, <laughs> even though I'm not in the business anymore is that uh, I have so many friends and family that are still involved in this industry, and it literally is the core of our fabric, or the fabric of however you want to use that saying. Um, it, it's, it's the tie that binds, and it is such a social aspect of our lives. Um, you know, we just really need to support you guys to make sure that uh, everybody makes it through this. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... We, we got to get the landlords on side, but the landlords need to be looked after too. Like it's not, Hey, a yeah, free for agreed. The, agreed. the landlords are looking after themselves and I get that, but we need to get through this and the structure, the rent structures we have today will not carry anybody through for the next year. If the rents don't go down or we don't get major support, my my guesstimate was 30% of the restaurants won't reopen when this is done. 20 yep. to 40% won't reopen once the deferred payments come in. It'll just crush them. It'll yeah. just destroy them. Exactly. And, and you're right. My previous conversation with Chad McCormick, by the way, Chad says hi. Um, yeah, say hi to Chad. My, my previous conversation with him, you know, I, I kind of threw landlords out of the bus uh, and that's from, you know, my previous position of working with landlords and trying to get deals done with them for restaurants. Um, and, and the difficulty is, is we all, we all look at, you know, there's so many people from the outside that look at this industry and go, oh, well, these restaurant owners make so much money. They're, you know, they're, they're richer than beyond belief. And nobody <laughs> understands that we're working on margins. I'm sorry, I can't say we're anymore, but the restaurants are working on margins of three to 5%. Um, and that a lot of that uh, on your grok, as sorry, your, your gross rent and operating cost to your landlord, you know, lots of guys, you know, could be paying. You used to always target like ten or twelve for fast casual, but you know, guys like you are paying far, far, far higher than that, um, right. and it's difficult. Yeah, no. So, so the government is trying, and I appreciate that. 
But the 75% wage subsidy doesn't help me if I have no business. I can't bring people back to do nothing. Yeah. So throw that one out. Yeah. A $40,000 loan, that's great. But that's yeah. rent in a couple of our restaurants. Yeah. You know, that's a month's rent. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it, these other loans are strictly that, a, a loan to carry you through. So now I'm going to be burdened with that debt with way less sales. We anticipate a year to two years to get back to where we were in sales. Crazy. So there yeah. it is, folks. Please get out and support these restaurants. Let's see them survive and, and, and move forward. Um, you know, 35 plus years uh, that you've been on this lance and, you know, I want to see you do it for another 35. Right? I don't. <laughs> five. Okay, five more for Lance. Five more for Lance. We'll give there we'll give go. Chad another thirty-five. Although there Chad doesn't want to do any more either. Yeah, he's awesome. a young pup. All right, yeah. buddy. I appreciate the call. Hey, no, I appreciate you giving me the time, and uh, you know, I will uh, make sure I'm getting some Terrence takeout sometime this week. Appreciate, appreciate it, Lance. It. Thanks, Rob. Take care, brother. We'll you talk too. to you soon.